Hey, this is uh, Math Art. Alejandro here. I'm just, I have a leopard gecko named Guy, based off of Guy Sensei, because you know he's dope. Um, he's such a cool reptile, and I just love how he looks like a little like raptor, like a little dinosaur. And I definitely wanted to work on drawing. Well, the idea I'm thinking of is like here's the head, right? So then the neck would curve around this. So I'm using a big pen. It's just a cheap old big pen, blue. So now I'm gonna draw its back. Usually Leos, like uh, Leos are kind of like, uh, almost looks like they got a little arch in their back. Not all the time, but at least that's what I've, I've observed with a uh, guy. He's so cool, he's awesome. Um, and I always notice that he's kind of like doing that. His back seems always arched, like he's like getting ready to like, pounds or something I don't know even if he's looking back or if he's looking forward so I'm gonna start off with this oval here or like a bean shape actually then a little oval for the head the neck is gonna kind of wrap down around this way and then its tail it's gonna be another it's gonna be like a uh, almost like an S so I'm gonna go from down here and kind of create the outside of the S. It's gonna be curved really big on the outside bottom and then kind of swoop up like that. And then all I'm gonna do for the other side is just follow that along. See? Super easy. Um, what I also like to do is to remember that it's a 3D shape and the leopard gecko usually have, they have like rings around their tail almost. I kind of create little lines like this to show the ring. See? So this is going to be kind of like the stance he's going to be in. We're going to have him, back leg's going to be a little stretched out. Going to have it like that. So it's two more ovals, see? And then almost like a little triangle, kind of. It's like a rounded triangle. Their toes are really funny. Their toes, like, I have long fingers. They're kind of like that, but like a lot more, a little bit more longer and like kind of weird like that. So I'm just going to kind of make them into little nubs. I think it's what, like four toes, I think? One, one is facing the out to the inside, two, three, and four. Um, especially for like cartooning, you always wanna like simplify that. So that's always a great way to simplify. Same thing, two ovals, and then a little triangle. One, two, three, four. See, and you start kinda seeing the buildup, even though I'm not really uh, done with it, you kinda get the idea. Also, I like to give myself a little ground plane just so I can have it kind of even out. And I don't forget that it is not floating because things don't just float. We have gravity, right? Um, and then I'm going to draw his other leg in the distance over here. Kind of like that. So it's going to be an oval. So I draw through my shape. And I'm also going to remember that the other leg is over here. So same thing, draw through my shape. One, two, three, and four. And this one's in the distance, so it's okay if it's like not really so visible, because your fo focus is gonna be up here anyway. And the eyes, it's always in the eyes, right? And all the cartoons and stuff, the focus is always on the eyes. So now I'm gonna start tying it down. So now that I have these shapes, I have, let's see the shapes. I have oval or circle, yeah, oval for the head bean shape, which is basically like an oval for the body. It's kind of like that, like you ever seen abichuelas or something like that when you're cooking, or when mom or dad's cooking, whoever's cooking at home and making beans, this is kind of the shape that you want, like that. And if you think about it, it's all three-dimensional, so it's not flat. Always think of it as a round shape. There's a front side and there's always gonna be a back side to a shape, unless it's a piece of paper. Um, his legs are based off of be, uh, ovals, two ovals overlapped. See, two ovals. And then his foot is gonna be a little triangle pad with four little ovals sticking out. Like that, see that? His tail is one giant S. Shape. 
All right, so let's make this Leo gecko really, really cute. Best thing that you can have whenever you go to draw, um, even if you want to draw like realistic, of course, always have reference. If you can't have the real thing, um, there's always Pinterest, you got Google, you know, I mean, everything's easy and accessible. You can always hit a book. I, I have a bunch of books up on my bookshelf. You could always do that easily um, and find references. Um, so I was literally drawing with him on my desk um, and just had him walking around. I also took pictures and videos of him and he's just so fun to watch. So um, that kind of helped as well, like get his like personality in there. Um, even though it's kind of goofy, they do have personality. They they kind of they're a little derpy. If you if you ever had a gecko, leopard gecko, Leo, they're awesome though. But they they are a little derpy at times. So I'm gonna draw basically to create the eyes. I'm gonna think about here's my center line right here. I'm splitting this shape in half, this uh, oval, and then in there I am basically making a cylinder. So like this. So I'm making a cylinder here and I'm keeping it really light because remember, I'm going to color with watercolor on top. So this is going to be his eyes here. Their eyes are kind of like you cut through the shape and you always get that like teardrop look, right? So then I'm going to go to the top, his eyebrow, and then he's got like his, the underneath his eyes. But what I'm going to do is he's going to be smiling. So we're going to exaggerate this a little bit more. And I'm gonna give it like a little highlight, maybe two little highlights. So his cheek is gonna cut in. His other eye, all you're gonna see is just that one side. You wouldn't really see the eye because he's facing the other way. His snout is gonna, what I like to do to kind of shape out the snout, I make a little small little line like that to kind of indicate or a little oval or circle. Um, because it's in the middle of the shape. And then I kind of use that shape right there to define my mouth, or like the top of his mouth at least. And we're gonna have him smiling, so he's gonna kind of come back, and then his mouth is gonna drip down like the bottom of his lip, and then it's gonna ride up down. See that? And you see how that line that I use there, it kind of works into that shape, because I'm thinking three-dimensionally. Then his bottom lip, gonna come down here so all I'm doing is still following that basic shape that I had underneath it and I'm just kind of going back and I'm gonna think about how he has extra meat under his neck like the little skin fat the little gobbler fat thing I think that's what you could call it I like to call it that sometimes I have three dogs sometimes I, I get the oldest dog Cora and I kind of like swish her neck on the bottom and I'm like oh she gets annoyed by that, but it's fun to do. Um, but yeah, that part of the neck where it's like a little extra loose, that's what I'm talking about right there. So I'm gonna go back to the top of the head. I'm gonna sharpen this out a little bit. And I'm gonna not really define it all the way, but I'm gonna clear it up a little bit more so I can see better. So um, Leo's, they have kind of like bumps on them. So what I do is I kind of just randomly put a few bumps. I don't go directly and do this because that makes it flat. You want it to kind of have some variety. They don't all have to be the same shape, um, but you just want a little bit of variety. So back to the mouth. I kind of curl it back up here, right? And then I'm gonna close it in, this part, and I'm gonna kind of fill this a little bit so you can see a little gap in there and a smile. Because they got such a cool dirty smile. His nose, they have little nostrils, one on this side. And all I'm doing is just kind of creating like a backward six or something like that, you know? It doesn't have to be too much. You don't have to think too much about it. I could add a little bit of bumps here. Just a few, nothing crazy. Just to find out a little bit more. I went with the, you see how I have three lines here, kind of? I went with the one on the bottom because I kind of like the way that moves. Um, one thing I am going to do is I'm not going to put it at the tip of his mouth because that creates a tangent and tangents make things look flat. So I'm going to kind of go back this way. And I'm going to do the same thing. Add a couple little ridges like that. Maybe some around here. Little bumps because they have a few of them along their bodies. Let's go to his leg. I'm going to give him a little knee. Even though they don't really have their knee that bumps out like that. But for cartooning purposes, it works. Makes it look more cute. 
Then I'm gonna finish out, follow those shapes that I built before. I don't get caught up on how clean it looks, I get caught up on how much volume it has and how much of a feel it has. Sometimes, um, later on I'll show you like my sketchbook, we could do a sketchbook tour later on once I do more videos. But um, I've been learning that like, it took me a while, a long time to like really understand this, that it's not about having that perfect build out, it's about understanding how to build your shapes out. So having that sketchiness, a lot of times gives your your drawings or your characters more life. Um, I always study a lot of big artists and you know just YouTubing stuff and whatnot, meeting artists. I'm a caricature artist now, and um, you know observing how they do their like sketches, and they're always you know really loose. It doesn't matter if they have little lines like this. That helps build up what you want and get your ideas across. This is what your sketchbook is for, is to play around, build up, get feelings um, of what an object or uh, character that you're drawing. So anyways, back to this. I'm gonna keep his feet, real, his toes really simple. Um, so I'm just gonna keep them as like little ovals. Just keep it simple. Cause that's not where the focus is at. And then to be, get in between, I'm gonna kinda create like a little web. That's it, that's the front foot. And then you notice how I kind of put little pockets of fat right here. That's just something I notice on him that he has, or Leo's in general. You know, even under our own arms, we have pockets of fat that kind of fold. You know, the heavier the heavier you are, the more fat you'll have on your underneath those, like little chichos or little rolls. Um, I have a lot of chichos, so I have a lot of rolls, so <laughs> kind of works for me in that way. That's how I see it. All right, so now let's work on that back leg. I'm gonna move this over a little bit because I'm a lefty, so my hand's gonna get in the camera for a second. I'm gonna follow that shape. Remember, I'm gonna make this one a little bit beefier. This is the back of the leg, this is the front. And then I'm gonna kinda create those little fat pockets again. Go here, and then one, two, three, and four. And I'm just gonna kinda fill them in, you see that? See, and it's not that hard, it's not too crazy. You don't have to put too much thought into it. Just remember that it's a 3D shape. I'm gonna fill out that last leg, and then what I'm gonna do is for this one, I'm gonna kinda shade it in just a little bit. Not, not too crazy, just kinda like a light shade. It's almost there already. And that helps push the, the leg that's further away, further into the distance. So it makes it look like it's on the other side. It helps it. All right, so now I'm gonna finish out this back side right here. And I'm gonna keep it loose. You see how I'm not connecting the lines? I'm just kind of leading our eyes so that we know that this is the butt, basically. Because sometimes if you finish things out all the way, um, it kind of flattens your image a little bit. But this kind of helps you lead your eyes because we all know that it's the butt. It's the booty of the lead. So now I'm gonna go around, and I'm gonna go around that tail, and I'm kind of keeping it loose. And what I'm gonna do is for for my cartooning purposes, I'm gonna make it look a little chunky at the end because their tails are kind of cute and chunky and stubby. And I'm gonna do the same thing, go back and create some little ridges and follow the tail. And I'm gonna just use those same lines. I'm not gonna connect all of them. I'm just gonna kind of. Keep them loose, keep them loose. The lines are always gonna be loose because when you're going with the watercolor, you'll see how it'll connect and it'll give it life as you sketch. Later on, we could worry about details. Okay, let's color this one now. So this is my uh, Sakura watercolor set. Um, it's, I think this is the what, the 24? No, not 24, sorry, it's like 16, I think, or something like that, colors. My palette's always messy, um, but I like it like this because one, it shows that you're doing your work and you're using it. Two, um, it's colors that I would use most of the times. You know, a lot of times you can have mixed colors like this. Um, it's kind of nice to have like an undertone for things like that. Um, so it, it kind of flips up this way. This is the little palette, and then here are my colors. My colors are really messy. <laughs> when I was working at a uh, school, I would let the kids use it all the time. And so they kind of went to town with it a little bit, but it's cool. Still, I still use it up from time to time. Like 
one of the colors is like yellow or like an orchard orchard color and they got like black in it. I can clean that out later. Here's my brush pen that came with it. It's a cool little kit. I have a smaller one that was given to me as a gift. Um, I keep that one in my book bag all the time and I love using that one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to always have like a little napkin like that right next to you. And this is to kind of clean off your brush and get it going. And I'm just kind of patting it down. It's not nothing intense. So I'm just kind of, you know, pushing things around. And you see how that kind of helps give it a little bit more character already? And I still have my underlines. It's okay. This is my sketchbook. I don't care about it being perfect. But cool. So now I'm going to get like this orchard yellow. It's a little bit darker. Not darker. It's almost like a goldish or like a, like a honey mustard color. There you go. It's like a honey mustard color. And I'm going to think about like where the shadowy parts would be. So let's say the sun is coming from this side here because his face is facing that way. I think the sun will be hitting here. Or at least I'm choosing to have the sun hitting or light hitting from here. So this is where his shadows would fall on this side of his head or body. So I'm going to do the same thing. This time it's going to be on the outer edges where I choose to put my shadows. And again, it doesn't have to be nothing intense. Just put a little bit at a time. Always worry, take your time on your sketches more than on your color. Because a bad sketch with cool colors is it's not going to work. <laughs> but the opposite of color. That's where you get the, the nice pop and kind of get some really cool compositions and stuff. So worry about that first, the sketching first, and then the colors kind of tie in. I'm put a little bit thicker here. from what I've observed from my gecko, it's got a little bit of orange in them, so I'm going to use a little bit of orange here. See? That kind of gives it a cool pop. I'm put some right there in the middle. And maybe I'll build it up a little bit more here. And I think that should be good. I'm going to put some on his booty button. Spots. So I have the palette here with like a little bit of brown mixed in there that I used the other day. And um, their patterns are kind of just random. Um, they don't have like necessarily a certain exact pattern. Um, so you can kind of play around with it. Just don't overdo it um, when you're adding your pattern. If that makes sense. Um, this one, I'm just going to kind of pat it down. Dino has kind of like a little ring right here in the middle of his forehead, so I'm going to kind of create that. And then he has some spots that kind of trickle down to his face, in front of his face. So I'm going to put a few. And since it's a cartoon, it doesn't have to resemble him exactly. You just want it, the idea of what it is, what you're trying to do. So he has some bigger spots. They have a variety of spots on them, so it doesn't have to be an exact shape. They have some that kind of go into their underbellies and even on their chin, uh, chin. So just add one or two here. It doesn't have to be nothing crazy. See how it's starting to build up now? We have ourselves a cute looking little Leo gecko. Some of them are round, some of them kind of are like bands on them. So you can play around with that. Some are just ovals and spots. Sometimes when you try to mimic too much, that's where you lose it. You lose that little life in the character. I'm just gonna kind of just just give it some some spots. I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm not trying to make it look like him. 
If you want to do that, then you do more of a realistic portrait. And that one, you definitely want to take your time. So I think that's pretty, pretty good. I just kind of take the colors I already have there and just kind of mix them up and make them look um, mushy and dirty. And that gets me the look that I, I need. And I'm gonna put a little heart right here. I'm gonna just use that shape that I kind of put there. And I'm gonna put a little heart there, like that. Now it's kind of cool drawing a little cutesy thing like that. Define the lines a little bit more on certain spots, like the top of the head maybe. Cool, and then we have ourselves a Leo gecko. I'm gonna do another one for fun. So this one's gonna be kind of cool. So it's your sketchbook. Um, unless you want it to be just a single page, I like to fill out my sketchbook with different sketches. I used to just do one per sketch or one per page. But um, over time, as I got more into like drawing and characters and stuff, I was like, you know what? Just play around, so explore shapes. So now I kind of just play around with different shapes. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have it look like he's coming out from this corner, almost like this is just like a wall here. So I'm gonna have an oval there, sorry about that. And then I'm gonna have this neck, it's gonna be like a cylinder. So there's the circle, and then the cylinder coming from over here. See that? Cause they kind of have long necks. Um, not super long, not like a giraffe or anything of course, but it's pretty long. And I'm gonna kind of just show my dimension there. Um, I'm gonna have his feet kind of coming from here in the corner. You see that? So I'm gonna kind of create two ovals right there. One, two. And I'm just building up my shapes. So now I'm gonna think about what his face is looking like. I'm gonna draw my line so I see where the center of the head is. And I'm gonna use this line right here for its smile. So that's where its smile is gonna be. They have pretty chunky faces if you look at them. So I'm gonna kind of use that to kind of create my cheeks. See how I'm, ca I'm cartooning them? I'm thinking cartoon-like now. And I'm saying, okay, these are the cheeks for Guy. And then the top of his head, I'm gonna kind of, their heads are usually kind of flatter towards the top. Um, so I'm gonna kind of keep that in mind and do that here. So it's something like that, see? Then it's eyes, remember it's a cylinder. So I'm gonna put one eye here. And you don't have to draw the line out, but I am going to, and then another line here. And you see how it's starting to kind of come together, right? You see the eyes, the smile, and it's loose. So now I'm gonna use like the eyes to kind of create, not only the, the eye shape itself, I'm gonna overlap the cheek into the eye. See that? So the eye is gonna look like it's sitting on the cheeks. And then I'm gonna use that round shape and kind of point it down and go back in. Down, go back in. And this would actually lead to its snout as well, which would be like about here. You don't have, don't connect it all the way because you wanna, again, lead the eyes. See that? And then I'm gonna create his eyebrow at the top and his tongue, right? So I'm gonna have the tongue kind of come out this way. And it's just an oval shape, that's all it is. It's an oval. After I create the mouth, I kind of put a little hump right here, and then the mouth kind of just follows that way. And then you're gonna, what I do is I kind of Follow up and create the little pockets in the cheek. Remember, keep it loose. Don't don't uh, put too much pressure until you're like know exactly what you want. And then I'm gonna kind of create the little spots of uh, shine resembles like the glare in the eyes or the twinkle in the eye, the kind of thing. Color that in real quick, just to kind of help it pop. Sometimes I like to start with the eyes first, or like once I have my base, I start with the eyes, um, and then I kind of flesh out everything else. But in this case, I thought it would be cooler to kind of leave it towards. 
I'm gonna remember that it's not just a stiff shape. These shapes kind of have, they're organic. So you gotta remember there's little wrinkles and things like that that come from it. So I'm gonna kind of show like extra meat that's kind of there. And then I'm gonna draw the feet in. Sorry about my hands covering up. And show the little toes. So one, two, three, and four. And don't worry about the toes like being perfect. This is just to kind of get the idea of what the Leo's doing. They have little bumps, so don't forget that part. Just kind of keep it loose. They have little bumps. Put a few here and there. And um, I like to give them eyebrows just for fun. Gives it more of a character. And we're gonna color this one too. So his tail, let's have the tail actually show in. Cause I feel like, I mean, that's a big thing about them. That's a big part of them, a big detail. Got that little chunky, stubby tail. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Remember, it's an S shape. So I'm gonna put like shoulders right here almost. So it kind of defines that part. And then I'm gonna go from the neck. I'm gonna kind of create an S shape. Like that, see? And then all you're gonna do is follow that shape back. And remember it's roundish. So you're just gonna make sure it's got that 3D shape to it. And then I'm gonna follow, create the little grooves in it, the little ridges. can't forget that they have the little bumps on their tail. So I'm gonna kinda come in and create a few little ridges. They don't have to all touch, but I'm gonna create some just to lead the eye and the idea of it. And then now you just pick some lines and define some of them, not all of them, but some, just to show a little bit of overlapping. And it gives it dimension in the tail. And this is the part where you kinda add style to stuff how sharp you want a line to be, how thick or how thin you want a line to be, um, how much of an angle you want the line, how round. And that's where you start getting your character styles and um, different ideas for stuff like that. And, I mean, I'm, I'm nowhere like near like those character designers, but if you ever watch like the really big artists who've been doing character design and things like that for you know their whole lives, basically, they are playing around with like every little detail. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that yellow. Remember, keep it light. So remember, it's light, a yellow on the top. Some of them are orange. They have different morphs. I forgot to say that. There's different morphs of when in leopard geckos. There's like orange ones, there's white ones, some that have like white and purple. There's um, like black ones. Like they look so cool, man. Like I, I wish I could have more, but um, that would be insane. And I wouldn't have one the funds to get them all. And it would just be a lot of work to take care of them. But they are awesome, man. Like, I, I've seen, like, orange ones. I want one so bad, um, like an orange one. Uh, that would be, like, a dream to have something like that. Or, like, a super giant gecko. Um, but, yeah, they come in so many different morphs. If you just look on YouTube or, like, Google it, you'll see what I'm talking about. And they, you, you just can't help but not, like, want one. So that's some of that yellow. And I'm gonna go into that peach color. It's kind of like uh... So what I do sometimes after I put my first color down, I clean off my brush a little bit and then I just pick up that paint that I put down already and try to move that around. And that's what keeps it really light and not so harsh on your, uh, your build up. And then you can darken what you need and what you don't need. You see? All right, so then I'm gonna get some from the tongue. Just gonna use some of that pink the skin tone that I use there. Cause then I can kind of create like a highlight or something. If I need to. So 
clean that brush off. Now I'm gonna get a little bit darker yellow. Or just more, uh, just regular yellow, but less water. Or more opaque, that's the word I think, opaque. I'm gonna pick the spots that I want like highlighted up here and then like the longer ridge of the nose. See that, how it pops really quickly. And um, that's the beauty of like having my sketchbook or a sketchbook. Um, don't worry about it being perfect. I, I, I let go of that a long time ago. Um, but it took a long time to like really understand that and really see like the imperfections is what makes it perfect. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of corny to say, but it's so true. Those imperfections, man, like having the line showing, that's where you see the buildup. That's where you show that you understand what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna pat it around so I can build up those little spots. And then that's how you, you can see, one, you see your shapes, and then that's how you can play around with the shapes that you have. All right, now I'm gonna get some of that orchard yellow. Orchard, orchard, orchard. One of the words. And I'm gonna cut up. Clink, clink, clink. Splitting, splitting. Bow. Put that down on the bottom. This is towards here. You see how that's kind of builds up that dimension? So that brownish black that I had, that muddy color, it's gonna be the tail, the spots on the leopard gecko to make it look like a leopard. That looks cute enough. So let me get some red for the tongue. Super. Well, the tongues are usually like a pinkish. Soak up some of that water. Let's clean off your brush and then just drag that brush right over the spots. That helps pick up your water. Sometimes like doing wet on wet is cool too. As you can see the water, the water color kind of like smear in or like bubble into the stuff. Um, kind of spreads, I mean. So, and I have blues in here already, so I'm gonna take some of that blue. It's really diluted and just kind of like, just go around the background. Just give it like a little bit of a ambiance, I guess, if you want to see. A little bit of it. Just a little, little bit, a little, little bit. A little, little bit. See, it kind of gives it like a cool little pop, you know? Nothing crazy. Yeah, I love guys so much. Like, it's cool feeding them. It took a while when I first got them. I got them actually from uh, uh, Offer Up. It's an app, you know, it's like like Craigslist, but, you know, better. Um, so, this guy, he, I guess he was probably like maybe 19 or 20. He was going into the military, um, into the army, he was telling me. And uh, he was getting rid of them because, um, you know, he just didn't have nobody at home to take care of them. So I just, you know, asked if I could have them. I saw the listing and, you know, I was like, hey, I can take them in. And um, I told him I'd use them as a class pet, which I did for like the entire year that I was working at the school I was. And yeah, man, he just let me have them. And he, he told me he was a year old when I got him. So he's turning two in December. Um, so he's pretty cool. He's been doing a lot. Um, when I first got him, he was really shy. He didn't really care to come out. Um, the kids would always ask, like, why is he never coming out? One, because they sleep during the day. Um, you know, they're Gressler Copecula, I think is how you say it, um, which they come out at dawn and dusk. That's, like, where they come out. Sometimes they can, like, wake up whenever they want to, and, um, but that's once they get more comfortable. But for the most part, they're, like, dawn and dusk is when they're, like, most active. So that definitely took away from them seeing them a lot. Not like um, Dino, my bearded dragon, He's, you know, morning till night, he's awake. 
and you know, so making, you know, doing all this crazy stuff, jumping around, doing whatnot. So, um, so yeah, he was really shy. So it took me a while to kind of get him used to me. Now I can feed him with like from my hands, and I tap on his um, food bowl, and it'll make like a little tick, tick, tick sound, and he'll come out, and he knows that it's me, and it's time for food. So that is a cool way that I build trust with him, and um, he's been kind of. Now, like, coming out whenever he sees me come in the room, actually. It's kind of neat. And he's awake a little bit more often, so I'll see him climbing around and uh, doing a lot of cool little things like that more often now. So, yeah, so it's pretty cool, and he's pretty awesome. Uh, man, I love him, and I, I definitely want more in the future. <laughs> um, but for now, I'm happy with him and, and Dino and just kind of getting to, like, take care of him and work on his husbandry and kind of getting that better and sketching him all the time. Um, so yeah, um, this is our leopard gecko, our little fat tail. Um, my name is Alejandro. I go by math, uh, math bug on Instagram. And I go also by math art, math. So this is my little artist name, M-A-F-F. -F. If you want to see more, man, please share, like, and subscribe. All right, peace.